Hi guys, this is Paul Acevedo of Windows Central. Tonight I'm joined on the mic by Tyler. Hello. And we are going to stream some Massive Chalice for Xbox One. It's also available on Steam. This was a Games with Gold title, so I bet a bunch of you already have it, but just haven't tried it. But also a lot of people haven't gotten it, or they play on PC so they didn't get it for free. And we're going to give it a look. It comes from Double Fine. Tyler, what other games has Double Fine made? They made both the Costume Quest games. They made uh, that walking game that was pretty cool, the Tower Defense with the mechs. Oh, I can't remember the name. Iron Brigade. Um, Iron Brigade. Didn't they do the the Grim Fandango yeah, remake, too? Yeah, and the, the Day of the Tentacle remake that they've made, so a lot of adventure games. That is right. And stacking. What was the game with Jack Black in it? Uh, Brutal Legend, they did do that. That was one of their very yeah. first games. Connect Party, wasn't it? Connect Party? Yes. Yeah, I never played that one, but they said it was pretty fun for yeah, Connect Yeah, it's a crime thing. that they didn't, that Microsoft didn't commission a Connect Party for the Xbox One. Like, that's when they launched the one, the bone and it came with a Connect. really should have had a Double Fine game to go with it, because Double Fine was one of the few yeah, developers who made nice. good Connect games. You know, they saw the limitations, and they still figured out ways that you could have fun, which most Connect developers just plain couldn't do. Right. All right. Anyway, I'm going to start a brand new game. One thing to point out is you can choose what the names of the... You can choose whether the characters are thematic, non-thematic, or silly. I mean, I'm sorry, or both. So, like, just how serious do you want their names to be? Because this is a strategy game, and you have all these different units, and their names are kind of randomly assigned. You don't assign them yourself. So we're just going to try to have some silly names. Then you can select what house they come from. It's like a family line. Your starting party, that is. And we're just going to do random. Yeah, they did do Broken Age as oh, well, yeah, that one. Was kind of a mixed bag, I think. They did that. That was the big Kickstarter game, right? Like early in the Kickstarter yeah. trend, yes, it was. they brought in a ton of money it for it. One of the the first, maybe not the first, but like the in the top five early huge successes. Good morning. Right. So the the story kind of starts you in this weird place. You can see there's this giant cup here. It's the massive chalice that the game is named after. And it has two voices. They speak out of the left and right side of the chalice. And they're just kind of explaining to the kingdom and the player what's going on. It's the strangest premise. So weird that they, they went with massive chalice instead of giant cup is the name. <laughs> giant cup was probably already taken. I've never played Psychonauts. Adam and oh. Brian, but I've been meaning to. to. We just need you to take command because our citizens understand. See, the citizens can't take orders directly from the chalice, or, or they don't. We are not just a giant so, chalice. the ruler of the kingdom is the one who must blood. give the commands. Forge from the bloodlines of the great houses. Oh, and one last thing. Unfortunately, the blood you can never leave the throne, though. You also bound you to us. So Does they have a voice yes. acting? But do not despair. Can still command your heroes. As far as I know, the only Look voices are those of the Chalice. It has a male and a female voice. The female's voice seems to be Cortana. I could be wrong, but it sounds like the lady who plays Cortana to me. You see your heroes yet? Yeah? Great. Now, take command and search the area. The cadence is out there somewhere. I'm kind of just being quiet and letting this play out. It's a nice little introduction. Let's see, rotate the camera with the D-pad. For some reason it uses the D-pad for camera controls. I don't know why it doesn't use the left analog stick. I have Psychonauts on PlayStation 2 Classics on my PS3, but I think it's actually getting a PS4 Classics version that I'll probably get and end up playing it at that time when that Looks comes like out. It. Yeah. Indeed. I hear it's like a mix adventure game slash platformer. So I hear, but yeah, I never got to play it either. Frank Sullivan, interesting name. Horace Bummer, that's kind of cute. Sloppy Rivend, his name is Sloppy. I like that. I can't let Sloppy die. 
Your characters permanently <laughs> die in this game, so you do have to take care of them, or you should try to anyway. Do they do they level up, and so like if you lose a powerful character, you can really hurt yourself? You know, they do level up. The game is. I think the game is built where everyone's going to die off eventually, and the game keeps going. Uh, the game, I'm told, lasts for 300 years, so the, you know, it will go through generations of heroes. Hmm. Interesting. I do wish it was on PlayStation 4. I would definitely trade Grim Fandango for this. Yeah, it must be a result of a deal with Microsoft. You know, the reason. Double yeah, Fine sure. gave PlayStation better support this generation, and you know I met Tim Schafer, and he told me it was because Sony reached out to them and basically made deals with them. Mm -hmm. And let me point out that Tim Schafer, head of Double Fine, meeting him on the streets of San Francisco was still one of the coolest things that has ever happened to me. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I was completely starstruck. I mean, I meet people like that. You know, I met. I don't know, the Odd World guy, Lauren Manning or whatever. I meet some famous people as part of my job, but never just on the street. Like, you're always prepared for it because you already have a meeting with them or whatever. Right. Better or worse than Fantasy Star 3. Oh, I'm told it's not Cortana. She sure does sound like Cortana to me. Brian, I thought I heard that the original Psychonauts was going to be on PS4 as well, as part of those PS2 classics that they're doing, but I don't know for sure. I thought I heard that somewhere. PS2 classics, only $30 each. <laughs> Not really, how much are they actually? $15. Some are 10 and some are 15 And yeah, it definitely is coming to PS4, so I will check it out at that point. Yeah, one thing about Double Fine, they don't... Whether you like an individual game they release or not, they're all clever. Every single one of them is clever. And they, it looks like uh, Psychonauts 2 is actually confirmed for PS4 as well, so the whole Psychonauts collection will be on PS4. Psychonauts Legacy. That's right. The, I mean... It, is, uh, it wasn't much of a legacy. It's been kind of sitting at one game for a long time, and I think they, you know, finally found enough money. I think they did uh, do crowdfunding for Psychonauts 2 as well, yes, didn't they? Yes, they, they actually launched their own crowdfunding platform to do it. Yeah. Interesting. I don't know why they decided to do that over Kickstarter. I mean, it probably did not have to pay the <laughs> Kickstarter fees. Could be a part of it. And also, by having their own platform, they can potentially make money from that platform from other people's projects in the future. Yeah. Well, I think, I mean, it's pretty clear that they've figured out how to do Kickstarters right. You know, I think I think that the trend is dying down a little bit, but it's still pretty damn popular. Um, but, I mean, they might as well, you know, vertically integrate themselves into that area since they've had so much success with it and if they have the, you know, resources to do it. Yeah, it's important for them to have the money coming in so they can keep doing unique original games like this and, and other games they've done. Right. Indeed. Let's see, so we're gonna go look around. There's a bit of a fog of war at the edge of the screen, but it's more subtle than in some games. Let's see. Hmm. We're... They've been doing a few. Uh, Double Fine did a PC only game too. I can't remember what it was called, where it was like you could like control the game or something. You know, I might have missed that. Yeah. I used to keep up with them, and then they really started publishing and, and doing a lot of games. Oh, yeah. They branched out. Yes, indeed they did. Oh, uh, we completely forgot Sesame Street Once Upon a Monster. Oh, yeah. Well, we were talking about how they made great Kinect games earlier, and yes, that was one mm -hmm. of them. That, in fact, I would say that might be the best retail Kinect game. Interesting. I mean, I, Sesame Street's fun. You know, who doesn't like Sesame yeah, Street? Yeah, my daughter, you know, India, how old was she at that time? Maybe four? She was just the perfect age to enjoy it, and enjoy it she did. Uh, the, You know, the nice. imprecise Kinect controls still could occasionally limit the fun you could have with it, but basically it was like being in a Sesame Street. I mean, but in a real game, because they also had that Sesame Street interactive TV show thing. 
you remember that mm -hmm. they did National Geo Connect National Geo TV, yes. yeah, and uh, and Sesame Street, and that also was worth playing, but it wasn't as much of a game. Mm, those were good experiments from Microsoft. I mean, if yeah. you're going to have the Connect, then you need to be doing stuff like that. You need to find the right audience right, exactly. and titles that make sense for it. They'd rather stay back and, and then close. they also did the cave, which is on console. Yeah, that one I was disappointed with. Wasn't my favorite. I played it. Yeah. I must have played it four or six hours, and then co-op the whole time, and I finally gave up on it. It was kind of my co-op partner's fault because he was a little unreliable as far as coming over because it's local. But but also the game had major design issues. The story was good, I guess. I didn't make it very far. It's it's very much an adventure game, which is not my genre. But it's choice. also a platformer. Eh, kind of. Oh, we missed. Don't miss. Don't miss. Oh, he goes for a melee. Good. So let's talk about strategy a little bit, Tyler. What other strategy games have you played? I know you played at least one other yeah I've played a few um, I'm not terribly good at them they they intimidate me sometimes I played a good amount of Skulls of the Shogun but um, I didn't beat it it was too hard for me on Xbox 360 that's what I was thinking of and it was hard um, I played a game and I didn't I don't think I ever ended up beating it called uh, no, maybe I did beat it. It was on PlayStation now. I can't remember the name of it. I'd have to look. But it's definitely a strategy game where you like move your units, you know, across the field and stuff Starcraft? like that. No. <laughs> That's Ooh. the one. Uh, no, it was, a, it was. I mean, it was a pretty big game at the time. It was a pretty big digital release for PlayStation Three and an exclusive. But it, it didn't end up reviewing as well as they wanted it to, and it kind of like fell to the wayside. They actually had to build in an easier difficulty level because most of the people either just said it was like nearly impossible. Yeah. I love the the visuals of Skulls of the Shogun. Like I like that style the writing, a ton, right? but the, the game was hard. Yeah, the writing was cool. Yeah, I met the developer of that, and he was a really nice guy. And I was excited for that game, but like you said, it was just a little too hard, a little too complex. People who are really into the strategy genre probably wouldn't even mind all that. But yeah, for us, for we casual fans, it was too much. Yeah, XCOM is kind of like this, right? Um, I mean, it looks like this, but it's orders of magnitude more complex. Right. Yeah, 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 it's even this more complex. As we said, we are not in the best so now the chalice is telling us about the situation. This nation all around it is besieged by the cadence, this weird fluid that threatens to destroy all life. It reminds me of a lot of Iron Brigade's story. You know, Iron Brigade doesn't have a lot of characters in it. It's just like one or two guys who have all the speaking parts. And they had kind of an ominous force. <laughs> what was it called? The signal in that. And here you have the cadence, which is a muck. But the same kind of thing. It's some kind of alien force that makes bad guys, basically. So they went to a similar well. Huh. I, interesting. I don't. I can't remember the story of Iron Brigade at all. I was really into that game, so I remember it fairly well. Yeah, it was fun. I, I had a good time with it. I would love for them to do a sequel with a little bit of a bigger budget. And they had real problems updating the game on 360 and especially on Steam. When it launched, it was a Games for Windows title and Microsoft just would not let them pu publish an update for some reason. Eventually, they got cool. permission to take out the Xbox Live access and just make it a regular Steam game. But by then, I had stopped playing it. Anyway, it is time to visit the keep, so let's see what that is. Is it any keep in particular? This one. The keeps. So we're going to appoint a regent. We have several different ones to pick from, including Quiver Rivend. I think he was one of the guys in our party just now. The more experience they have, the more they'll pass on to their children. So you want them to have a lot of experience. But they have all these different traits that they'll pass on to their children, and it's something you actually have to think about. I don't even know what to pick. 
We'll have Sloppy <laughs> Riven do it. That name. Sloppy's gonna be a leader. <laughs> He's got average fertility. I don't believe anyone would accuse me of that. Let's see. Below average. <laughs> well, once upon a time. <laughs> point. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Your You're right. Um, oh, I was gonna say Banner Saga is another game that's that kind of reminds yes, me. Yes, although this is simpler and easier to get into. Like, not that Banner Saga's yeah. combat is too complex, but I think this is Just even more streamlined. Is the best nice. comparison for this is yeah. people, I think. Oh, the, uh... Yeah, Akima it's still game. coming up, but Pit People is also intended to be really fast and easy to get into, and I think combat-wise that they're similar in that regard. Nice. Yeah, I mean, I don't dislike the genre at all, but I mean, it it does take a bit of dedication. Even this, I mean, this, you know, the simpler ones, you can get the hang up a little bit quicker, um, but even those, you know, you do have to practice and learn a few things. That is true. So we're going to marry this guy off to Lily Junkie. Junkie, that's a nice name. And you can see nice. she's quite a looker. Actually, the characters themselves, I don't know, they're a little bit on the ugly side, but still. Yeah, they're... These two can make ugly babies together. It's final and cannot be reverted. So it's Lavix and Lily? I used to be Bob Jones. I used to be. Sloppy and Lily. Oh, Sloppy and Lily. There are no heroes in training at this keep, so... Is there anything else to do here? I can look at their individual stats, but that's it. So we go back. It's a lot to take in. <laughs> hey, no time for games. Good to see you, man. I have missed your comments on articles, dude. You're not reading them anymore, are you? You break my heart. <laughs> I never thought Sloppy would end up with a girl like Lily. <laughs> Sloppy ended up with a junkie. Yeah. <laughs> so we will go to the capital now. That's our home base. So called, you know, I messaged you on Skype. You Maze, here, you gotta, right? gotta work on answering, bro. Yeah, answer Skype, Maze. This is where your heroes return to after battle. Some people have the excuse that they don't really use a computer very much. I know he does use a computer very much, so he just needs to prioritize a little better. We can devote some of our power to help the war effort and the nation. Whether it's building. So now the chalice is talking about how it can fund these upgrades. Upgrades for your kingdom, you know, we'll go to research and see. We can either build a keep, Building a sage rights guild, or a crucible. Looks like we want to build a keep first, and it takes a certain number of years for these upgrades to go through. A little bit like civilization in that regard. The amount of time required dissuades you from searching something. Consider the sage rights guild. This game was free right when it launched, right? Yeah, it was a Games for Windows Live title. Now it costs $19.99, I believe. I just think it's a pretty cool game for at launch with, with games that's cool. Like one, yes. It's a little bit less mainstream just being a strategy game. There's a lot of people who just won't right. try it because it's strategy. But they shouldn't be like that. Which is unfortunate, but... Yeah. Why are all these people sending me Xbox Live messages lately? Placing a building in a region or out of region. You're super popular. So. Keep in mind, most of our power is focused on charging up to cleanse the cadence. We can only so we research can only one thing at a time. Energy to research one thing at a time. I think we're going to keep it that simple. I played, new heroes. I played Civilization Revolution. Effort. That's not exactly oh, the same, oh, but that's kind of strategy yeah, still. Yeah, that's true. Just a different kind of strategy. But your yeah. Gives us an that was that was a nice, simple to learn game. I mean, there was certainly in-depth strategies, but it was like way simpler than the actual Civilization games. I wish they'd make a new one of those for the next gen of consoles. That'd be nice. There, there is a. Revolution. You mean a revolution kind of spin-off, or just like Civilization just five Whatever or six? they want, at least some kind of Civilization game for this gen. Yeah. There's a Tropico 5 is coming to Xbox One and it's out on PlayStation 4. It's actually free with PlayStation Plus this month. It's somewhat similar is my understanding. I guess it's a little bit more like city building now. Yeah, though. I'll have to try that. I've, I met the, the publisher, Calypso. I met them at, uh, what was it, PAX South. They were nice. Oh, cool. Nice. 
Yeah, I need to try it out myself. So the couple that we paired together has had a baby, and once that baby is 15 years old, they will become a hero we can use. Oh, look at the baby. You can rotate it around. It looks funny because the wall stays in place, but the crib is just rotating. Whoa. Demon baby. And they named him LaRue Rivend. Increased dexterity, decreased max HP. Oh, he's sickly. Quick, increased movement range. Okay. That's our baby. Now, yeah, what else am I supposed to do now? Visit capital. How long does it take for like an in-game year to pass? Uh, you Well, you just hit right trigger and it fast forwards to the next event of whatever event it is, however many years that was. Ah, gotcha. So we've already built a keep. I don't know if I should... You have all these other different categories of things. Armor, weapons, items, heroes. Adopt a baby girl. Hero discovery boost. We'll go 12 years. We're going to build that. Discovered heroes will be two. Oh, abandon current research. Okay, the current research had not finished. So I think I'm just supposed to wait it out by hitting right trigger. Let's go. It always feels weird accomplishing something without having beaten Now the research is complete. Mm. Should have seen my books after I was done. Yeah, and every time something finishes, the chalice, the two characters talk to each other. It's amusing. <laughs> Congrats to our winners. Horace Bummer is a caber jack. I believe we are going to assign... Oh, but he's one of our fighters. I, we don't want to take all the fighters out of the loop, do we? I don't know. Yep, I just... We'll go with this older guy. Where is he? Armando. Armando Lapiros. 22. A point. And he can marry either an alchemist. They're both alchemists, so yeah, let's have him marry Livy Waterford. She's 38. She's a lot older than him. Lucky guy. Ooh. Made a December relationship. <laughs> I always liked older ladies. She'll teach him a thing or two. <laughs> she will. You know it. Yeah, no. I've dated a few older ones. I mean, my current girlfriend's a little bit older, but I mean, yeah, I dated some significantly older ones a couple times. Let's see. Now I've already built a keep, so build a Sage Rite skilled. What's this do? Hasten the time required to complete research. Yeah, if you were going to build that, building it early on seems like a good idea. So let's do that. Oh, cool, Torky. So I have to pick an empty place to build it. Interesting build it in the salt stacks. Now it's time to hit right trigger and fast forward to the next event. Don't you build a lot of stuff like this in like puzzle quest or something? Hmm. I'm trying to think. I swear there's like some building going on there that increased your stats. Like you could build a prison and stuff. I swear you could, but I can't remember. It's been a long time since I played that. Could have been. It has been a long time since I played the first one. Yeah, it's actually on a PlayStation 2 as, or on PlayStation 4 as a PlayStation 2 classic as well. Oh, this is not good. We have two different attacks, and we can only fight back one at a time. <laughs> Angel kisses is, didn't pr totally appreciate your com comment about her age. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll defend this region. And Adam is stirring the pot. It's that Torg, you know, I just meant older than me in general. Do you feel it? That little tingling in the air before a fight? I know they do. Here is where now I have to add another hero to fill in for the missing slot. You deploy your heroes to battle. We'll send Mickey Trayens in. Jump in. It's a lady. But yeah, the, the sure faces on the ladies are bad. Confirm. Pack. Now we've got a full party of five. Deploy. 
So, so they've been they've been rumoring rise for games with gold for like the last six months. It's bound to happen eventually. I don't know right. You now, when would be a good time to announce a a bigger game? Would be E3. Say okay, later this month or or in July, we're gonna have this game and it's a retail title. That would be a good time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think Sony did that when they when they kind of like revamped PlayStation Plus to make it like a really useful thing. They like announced at E3 like their big uh, instant game collection lineup. Microsoft sure had a good April. I I, I forget that like. Last April for Games with Gold, they gave away like double the games. Like I think every April is, I think April's the anniversary of when it started. So I think like every April they do like a really awesome month. Cause uh, what's that game called? Sunset Overdrive is a excellent game. Yeah, that's a good choice. To get Maybe I'll finally play it. No, I won't have time to play it. <laughs> Jerk. I'd love to play that Dude, one. Dude, I want to go back and play more Dark Souls 3. Do you think I have time? No, I do not. Because, by the way, guys, I reviewed Dark Souls 3 last week. Please check out that review if you haven't. We always say that, and the only one who goes and checks it out is Ricardo. But everyone who hasn't seen the review, please really go read it and leave a comment. The only way I know you read it is if you left a comment. But anyway, I put a lot of work into that Dark Souls 3 review. I'm very proud of it. And that game very likely will end up being one of my games of the year. And I just, I don't know, I think it's funny because everyone made little comments, oh, Paul doesn't like games to be hard, Dark Souls is hard. You know, but I liked it just fine, and I'm as good at it as any casual Dark Souls player. Somebody who's played them all is going to be better, of course. But you just have to have the right attitude, Tyler. You have to stick with it. Yeah, you have to be yeah. patient. So, 76% chance to hit this guy. Let's see if we can do it. Oh, yeah. I played some uh, Advanced Wars as well. Oh, man. I really liked the first one of those that I played. I guess the first DS one. Uh, the one I played was on Game Boy Advance, I think. It was fun. Very, like, I mean simple enough to learn, like there's still some strategy involved, but like you knew what you were doing and stuff. See Adam? I don't know if I can believe that Adam. You've always been a little dishonest with me. Oh that Adam. He's a tricky one. You know, you know he's playing Resident Evil 6, <laughs> right? You gotta... You gotta wonder a little bit about someone who voluntarily plays that <laughs> I game. I know, especially having already achieved all the gamer score in it. Like, what can make a man yeah. go back to that? You know, what could he have done wrong in his life that he feels the need to punish himself that way? <laughs> I hate to think about it, but there's got to be blood on his hands, that's all I'm saying. He went to confession with a, Cap a Capcom representative, and that was his penance, was to play through the game one more time. <laughs> oh no, one of my guys died. It was bound to happen oh. sooner or later, so... This is only the second battle, and it's tough. Because these enemies, they explode into this goo, and it kills the crap out of you. Uh, that's annoying. Yeah, thank you for reading it, Little Fire. Oh yeah, I saw both your Pac-Man and Galaga articles. Oh, nice. Good stuff. Yeah, you know, a lot of people... That's Bezel is such a cool word. Bezel? <laughs> yes, yeah. it is. I'm glad to know it. Being into arcade games, you you know, you get to learn the parts of the cabinet sometimes. Yeah. Stupid exploding enemies. Yeah, uh, Brian mentioned that he had never played Galaga. It's hard for me to imagine, like... But, you know, my... I would play classic arcade games in gas stations, laundromat, restaurants, pretty much everywhere, you know? But I guess some people didn't have that experience. Even just being a little bit younger than me, though, arcade games were still around for quite a while. Yeah, I mean, I didn't I didn't play games like that in the arcade. I played, like, the Ninja Turtles beat-em-up and X-Men beat-em-up and... 
some of the shooter games, the light gun shooters, stuff like that, but I definitely didn't play like Pac-Man games. They were a little bit, you know, more advanced than that when I went to the arcades. Yeah, like when I would go to a real arcade, man, I lost another guy. Okay, this is starting to get frustrating. When I went to a real arcade, then it would be filled with games like that. Final Fight, um, Spider-Man, different games, X-Men, of course. But, like, just, you know, a lot of businesses, even bars, for instance, will, even today, still have Pac-Man or Miss Pac-Man or Galaga. Yeah, I played, I played Miss Pac-Man in a laundromat a couple nice. of years ago. I got, I got whooped. <laughs> Did you beat... How far did you get? Do you remember? Um, Only like the third or fourth level. Uh, maybe the second or third. I can't remember. I played with some friends and I did not do very well. Shut up your face, this guy just said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess it depends on the kind of establishment. But more casual establishments, they tend to like to go for simpler, more old school games. It's true. I did play some NBA Jam in the arcades, but I mostly played that on my Super Nintendo. NBA Jam, rad. Yeah, my local arcade had that as well. As did, I think, the pizza place where I played a lot of different games. First place I ever played Double Dragon. Yeah, Bowling Alleys, that's another one. Angel Kisses. So th these exploding enemies and stuff, I haven't had enough time to learn the mechanics. So it, not just because I'm streaming, but just because it's only the second battle in the game. Yeah. And you can't you can't expect to go into a strategy game and get everything right the first couple times. I mean, they're kind of built to have a learning curve. Let's just hope I'll be able to at least win the battle. That would be frustrating. There's more guys on this field than I expected, more enemies. They're all over the place. And the fact that just, like, killing one by melee, you could end up dying just because... Uh. Yeah, that's annoying. Like, well, do you have any, like, ranged, any ranged archers or anything that you could kill them with? See, they... I must not have built my party right or something, because, yeah, I don't seem to have anyone ranged to fall back on. Who's this guy? He can attack her. No, he cannot. Okay, so just come back up this guy. One of the issues a lot of, like, <clears throat> like myself and probably like you more casual strategy gamers have is, like, you, you build your party how you think it should be, and then if you go in and you get destroyed, like, even if you don't lose your members of your clan, which in some games you do actually lose your party, um... It still feels like you spent so much time doing it, like that, like the failure is really punishing because you, you know, could go into a twenty-minute battle and end up losing, and then have to do it all all over again. And so it can be, I don't know, discouraging sometimes. That's very true. Oh, cool! Killed that guy without any big penalty. Don't laugh, he says. And then when you do lose your characters, it's even worse. You know, you feel like, uh. Yeah, I mean, how many more characters do I have to replace these people? I don't even know. It's still early right. days. I would assume that there would be an infinite amount, but I don't know. I just used a power on that guy. I threw a flask at him. Probably wasn't the best move, but... At least that way I didn't have to get close to him yet. Dr. Zavoda said he built a custom 4-game NBA Jam cabinet, plus stuffed a MAME computer in it. Four-player CP arcade glory. Well, that's Sounds rad. cool. You know, I've got a real two-player arcade cabinet. I could put JAMA boards in that, but it's only two-player. Yeah, I'm down to two guys. It looks like I'm very likely to lose this battle. I don't know if it will let me just retry the whole battle or not. My big mistake was Fire not... Fire another strategy game. Oh. Have you played some of those? No, I haven't. Uh, they sound pretty them. hardcore. It... Yeah. Yeah, having to restart the battles all the time because you don't, because most people just don't want to lose their characters, or at least it sounds like a lot right. of people don't, from what I've read. That would be a drag. 
Yeah, exactly. Don't laugh. Level up. This guy has leveled up too, I think. Let's see if I can spend his skill point. Unlocked at level 4. Oh, so being level 3 doesn't matter very much, does it? Dark player says I'll just have to take the loss. <laughs> That's fine. Just a reminder, everybody, it's raining heavily over here. Hopefully we don't get cut off. We have a nice turnout tonight, considering that the prize-wise that this game, a lot of people already have it. Yeah. So that is good to see. We do this knockback move on him. Smacked him right into a wall, and now he's stunned. Can this guy even hit him? Charge. No, he cannot. Just gonna spread him over there. What have you been playing this week, Tyler? I have been playing... I played a lot of Letter Quest Remastered. And then a little bit of a game called Life Goes On, which is a platformer where you, like, use the bodies of your deceased turns to, uh... Um, so, like, you would, like, if you need to get over a pit of spikes, you, like, die a couple times, then you jump on your body to get over your old bodies from your old lives. So it's kind of fun. You know, from what I saw of that game, it doesn't have very impressive production values. It does not. I can see how it would still be fun, but... In this world where there's so many, in this modern landscape where there's so many great looking platformers or, you know, platformers with clever art styles or different things like that, then it's really hard for me, it would be hard for me to play one that looks like one guy made it and it should be a mobile game, you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I get it. I, I definitely think that it hurts their business in the long run when, like, you see that game and a couple other games on the store, you know, it's definitely not going to draw anyone's eye. Um, the actual gameplay is quite fun. That's good. But yeah, I mean, this is a world with electronic super joy. That's what the developers need to remember. <laughs> not on PlayStation. <laughs> I guess you're right. Since it's not on PlayStation, it'll do just fine there. Visit Capital. Um, well, we got a baby coming up. Let's let the baby be born. Fast forwarding a bit. Oh, I have played a little bit of Doom. It's not too bad. I haven't played a ton of it. I would greatly like to play it. Ah, but it's all a matter of finding the time. Skill. I was always jealous of those in my class who went on to join their ranks. They ended up designing the rotary trebuchet, still used in keeps to this day. As well as the first Oaken Stone crossbow. I'm enjoying the dialogue. I, one, I came in for an armor fitting, and by the end, both of my arms were on fire. <laughs> what a bunch of brilliant. That's funny. The two chalice voices are talking like they used to be people. I wonder if they actually were. Or if it's just silly jokes. So, who do I appoint, and what does it. I just don't even know what it means. Like, do I want a younger person to be the sage right? Do I want an older person to be? No idea. I'll put Oki Ninja Waterford on it, because that's a fun name. <laughs> that's how you should pick things in games like this. Yeah, indeed. Oh, only death may escort him from study. Yep, sorry, Oki Ninja, you don't get to have babies. Of many, I hope. Achievement. Word. Sage, right? That's cute. I've been playing Letter Quest Remastered too, and boy, I'm impressed by that game too. We have a yeah, review coming up on that as well. Probably, I don't know, Monday or Tuesday-ish. Everyone, please read that when it comes out. Yeah, they they implemented the RPG mechanics well into the kind of Scrabble style gameplay. Definitely. I don't know, do I want it? I can induct two more Sage Rites, but I have no idea whether that's good or bad. At some point it must take away from your, your character pool for the battlefield, right? You would think. 
I guess. I don't know. I wish I had more experience in games like these. Well, I, could give I don't tips. know if there's any kind of experience to draw upon. Intelligence 5. Somebody who's played this before, tell us. Too bad Mr. Griffith can't be here. I think he has to work or something. But he played it. So let's research something else. Nation. Hero discovery boost. I can increase that. Discover new heroes. Decker, yeah? Decker player asks if anyone thinks Gearbox should remaster Borderlands 1. I don't see why yeah, they would. They didn't do it with the other... If if they were going to, it would have been done already. Yeah. Besides, you know, part one is good, and I understand why somebody would remember it fondly, but if you really think one is better than than two in the pre-sequel, then just go back and play it on your PC, I guess. But but I don't think it's better. What do you think? Um, I mean, I, I think I liked one more than two. But I think it was maybe just the burnout factor because, like, it, it, they are long games to play. And, like, one, you know, I was like, all right, I'm getting burned out right near the end. Two, I felt, like, burned out quicker, probably just because I had, you know, hadn't had enough Borderlands for a while. And I didn't play them right next to each other, but, I mean, I played them fairly close together, maybe within six months of each other or so. I don't know. I think the remastered uh, trend is kind of like dialing down a bit I mean I don't know I know that Batman just got announced and I think everyone is expecting a Bioshock collection still to come so maybe not as much as I'd expect this is weird I can marry this guy his wife just died I can marry him off to someone else but it doesn't look like I have any females left Oh uh, no, no females. Yeah, I think I can marry him off to a guy. So the chance for children none is the answer for all of them. Uh, <laughs> I guess I'm just not going to marry him off if there's no female to choose from. Not that same sex wouldn't be great, but that's not your in, your goal in this is specifically to make those babies. It's just got to make the babies. So Choices on the oh, this is interesting. Now, I'll be making choices on the so we have a random event that's just happened. Come on. I, will not apologize if I'm I was kind of disappointed with the, the announcement of the Batman collection just because I think that Arkham Origins is a pretty good game itself. Like, there's no reason it shouldn't be included. enough to say the name right. I do say the name right. Arkham Origins. Well, now you said it right. Origins. I just don't emphasize the O as much as everyone else does. What was that Kent Brockman line from The Simpsons? I don't uh, say evasion, I say avoision! <laughs> so, so, do I forbid him from transmitting? I'm gonna let him transcend space and time in search of this relic. Okay, why not? Let's see how that goes. He jumps into the chalice and he's whisked away in an explosion of energy. He's been removed from my retinue, so there's yet another character we can't use for now. Boy, did I even pick something to research? I think I might have forgotten to. Oh, that was mine, AJ. Sorry about that. Yeah, it sure wasn't mine. <laughs> so I can build another keep. Do I want to build another keep? You make babies that way, but I think maybe I should work on hero discovery. Yeah, I think you need to find some females for your uh, group. Oh, no, there. I do have some kind of research going on. Discover new heroes. Yeah, you're right. I definitely do. Well, the baby those other people had. A small group of Chalice-attuned citizens have been found and added to our heroic roster. Okay, that's good. That's more like it. Maybe I could... There's a whole lot of this, like, outside of battle management going on, yeah, huh? Yeah, I guess it's a big part of the game. So now I can view the new heroes. Big Hank. <laughs> this guy's name is Big Hank. That's cute. And there's a lady, so I can marry her to that one guy. Oh, but first I need to start more research. Search hunt. Yeah, like uh, 
Man, I just wish I knew what was important out of all these things. I guess it's just kind of trial and error. Yeah, there's, I mean, games like this, there's like two ways to go about it. You trial and error, because I mean, I'm assuming like at the end of your 300 years, your game is over, and then if you play it again, you play from scratch, right? Is that how it works? So kind of like a roguelike in that regard? It certainly could be. Um, so I mean, there's trial and error. The other option is always to just do a little bit of looking things up online. You know, you don't, you hate to like look up all the answers online, because there's, I'm sure there's, you know, foolproof tech, uh, techniques and stuff, but... Sometimes just looking up a thing or two and looking for some hints and recommendations never hurts. Yeah, because if I wasn't on stream, then certainly I would be happy to look up a guide or something. Yeah, right now, you kind of just need to go with what, go with your gut, go with whatever sounds good. Yeah, although I still feel like somebody in the audience could be giving us actual advice, but no, not today. <laughs> Yeah, this game was free for all you Xbox One Gold members, which should basically be all of you. None of you tried it out. <laughs> Maybe they tried the, they did the tutorial battle, and that was it. All right, let's fast forward to the next event. Territory attack. Oh great. Let's hope this goes better than the last one. Although I did win the last one. Against type reward. Seeds a 27-year-old female. I don't. 25% reduction of current research time. Oh, so you can pick what kind of reward you want from the battle you're picking. That's interesting. I do need a female, so I guess I'll go with this one. We always need more ladies, am I right, guys? That's right. Darn straight. We're going to send in Big Hank. So, in addition to Big Hank... A hunter. Okay, the hunter guy has bow and arrow, so he must be my range dude. Then everyone else has to be a melee guy, so let's hope they don't do that exploding crap. They probably will. <laughs> Oh man, that thunder outside. Yeah, I can and just hear a reminder, it. it's gonna be a short stream tonight. How many minutes do we have left? I think we have ten minutes left according to the schedule. It might be fifteen. We'll send in this sixteen year old. So three caber jacks. Are you are you working tonight? What'd you say, Tyler? Are you oh, working yes, tonight? I... So that'll be fun. Deploy. Angel Kisses is trying to explain to Icky how babies are made. <laughs> There's a stillness oh, this is a cool looking battlefield. Like the world is taking a deep breath. Now knock the wind out of them. Knock the wind out of them. I like the sound of that. I could do a knockback or just a regular hit. I think for this regular would be better. Oh, this level looks cool. Are those eggs? They look like eggs. I don't know what they actually are. So I can just attack this guy from here. Oh, and he missed. Jerk. We're gonna kill that guy off. Got him. He says, trench. And then someone says, don't laugh. And like the colors intentionally kind of muted on this map. Yeah, they are. Yeah. Just making sure my screen didn't go into black and white and everything. That would be a bummer. Indeed. So guys, it's been a while since we talked about superhero shows. And one of those shows that I've been really into, although I haven't gotten to watch it in like the last month or so, is Supergirl. Supergirl, I believe, has wrapped up its first season at CBS, so I'm, I'm several episodes behind. But I, I just wanted to discuss this news briefly, and that is that Supergirl... CBS chose not to renew the show because it wasn't getting gangbuster ratings for them. Which is really a shame. 
But CVS caters towards like a senior citizen audience. They actually do, you know, like all their CIS shows. Oh yeah, yeah they well, are they aiming for forty and up crowd. They are not aiming for teenagers, young adults, yeah. people who like the things they liked when we were kids, like us. Well, and that's that's the reason why CBS is so popular right now too, because they go like people our age aren't really watching network television. Oh yeah, that's a fair point. You know, it's people that, that are at that age that are so used to watching a show, coming home and watching a show at 8 p.m. and 9 p.m. and 10 p.m. And so they put out the shows that those people like. Yeah, and there's nothing wrong with that as a business model. They have to do what works for no, them. No, not at all. I mean, yeah, they're they're actually crushing it compared to it. I mean, I'd even argue that their comedies are the most just kind of bland. They're sitcoms type stuff, <laughs> too. You know, just kind of appeal to, I don't know kind of blah so but they didn't pick it up huh they didn't pick it up for a second season which would have been bad news bad. except thankfully it was picked up instead by the cw which is the network which already has arrow the flash and legends of tomorrow nice fits in way better yeah. over there and as a matter of fact this should open the door for supergirl to join the same universe as those shows because supergirl actually cool. takes place in a separate universe although there was a crossover but it involved crossing universes yeah and it, there was a crossover with the flash yeah, right in, in fact it was it was the best it, it's funny because it, it came out right after batman love superman came out in theaters and yeah, the approaches to the material could not have been any more different. But everything that Batman Love Superman got wrong, Supergirl Flash crossover got right, and it's a really, really good episode. It's not perfect. Some of the villain stuff is could still be better. But yeah, the the parts with them meeting and getting along and enjoying each other's company and stuff, quite a bit better than them hating each other arbitrarily and then bonding over their mothers or some such nonsense. Man, our viewership is pretty pro CBS. <laughs> I didn't know we had so many old people watching our streams, <laughs> that is guys. Quite a surprise. <laughs> and knock this lady back. Take that. Just give, just giving you crap, guys. You guys are all free to enjoy whatever you Everybody want. Everybody got stunned. Don't laugh. Why do they say don't laugh so much? They need a few more little phrases to say. No, well, that's fine. I'm glad CBS took a chance on Supergirl, and the fact that the show was on on that channel gave it a higher budget than it would have had on the CW, so it had more practical effects work. Like, they had Supergirl herself on wires a lot, where she's actually floating above everybody, and it's not CG. And I like that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. you know, it adds a tangibility to it. Even if you know it's not 100% really a person flying there, it still looks more real than CG can it just does so that part was neat it had some good fights sometimes but yeah now cool. they have to move the production to vancouver i think they were producing it in california so the question is how much is the look of the show going to change and will they be able to keep all the same cast etc because everyone has to move yeah i was, I was wondering is, are they gonna just like do it as season two or are they gonna like, just go their own way and just do a new series or something? They haven't specifically said. There's a little teaser that came out just a couple of days ago on YouTube that you can see that teases the show coming over to CW, but it doesn't tell us how they're going to handle it or anything like that. Interesting. But they have already announced that come, I don't know, like December time, that they're going to cross over, like all of their characters into some kind of a, you know, in a special of some type. So it'll be a chance to see more characters together in one story than usually we would see. Well, they can do a Christmas episode where they all get together and get they can be secret Santas for each other. <laughs> That'll be great. Hey, Clutch Games. Welcome Yo, Clutch. Uh, I was going to say something that I forgot about superhero shows. You're a sport, Tyler, because I, I know you don't so, actually watch any of these particular shows that we're mentioning, but yeah, it's good that you can... Yeah, I mean, I try and keep up on at least the what they are. You know, I, I I think I probably would like Arrow, at least the earlier seasons. I've heard that Arrow has kind of fallen off maybe a little bit. Yeah, seasons 
season three is just a complete waste of time, and season four is not very good. So one and two are much better, especially two. It's rough to hear. Yeah, and you know, I might actually stop watching Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. We're several episodes behind, and I just cannot find the energy to keep watching it. <laughs> and they canceled uh, the Peggy Carter kind of mini-series, Yeah, and that right? was actually good. It had problems, but still it was overall good, and I looked forward to it. Nice. I need to watch the uh, the two prequel X-Men movies this week, because I'm going to go see the new X-Men on hey, Thursday. Have you seen either one of them? I've seen the first one, and I really liked it. I just want to see it again. Um, I can't remember what it's called. Uh, first Class, I think, is the first one of the yeah, prequels, First right? Class is a lot better, in my opinion, than Brian Singer came back and did and, Days of Future Past. And it's uh, it's an okay movie. The story doesn't really hold together very well, but it's still overall worth watching. But, yeah, and everyone's... All the reviews are saying that the new one is not quite as good as Days of Future Past. So it's a downward quality spiral that you can only get from Brian Singer. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a fan of his. He is a pretty lame director. And he doesn't yeah. he doesn't like the comic book aspects, you know, he doesn't like the colorful uniforms and stuff, although it seems that he conceded and has added some colorful uniforms to the newest one. Nice. Yeah, but ugh. Yeah. I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, my mom's work has like a screening for their employees or something, so we got free tickets oh, nice. to it. So that's I mean it's not like I'm intentionally going super out of my way to see X-Men because I love it that much. It's more just like it's a cool opportunity. And I like it enough that it's worth yeah. it, you know? And I mean, I'll go see this one in the theater, even though I, my hopes aren't especially high, but I know it's not going to be a complete train wreck or anything. It'll just be probably decent is what I expect. Right. Yeah. It won't be like a uh, fantastic <laughs> four or anything. No. But one thing worth pointing out is all three movies jump in time 10 years forward yet none of the actors age at all and the time jumps are very largely arbitrary so it's a really strange again that's a brian singer decision just to jump forward that much for no particular reason yeah just for the hell of it yeah well because i mean it, it definitely messes with like uh like you'd say you you if you're gonna move in time you have to age the actors to keep it you know realistic yeah if you're making these movies every two years then why are you setting them all 10 years apart and not aging right. them in any particular way? So Xavier doesn't have his hair. Oh, in this new one, Magneto has had a family and already lost them somehow, but it all happened off screen. Like he never had a family in one of the movies, but we just come to this one and oh, by the way, he had a family and he lost it. So that's pretty oh. silly. Yeah. But I shouldn't complain too much. I still want to see it. Maybe I should watch X-Men 3. <laughs> that was oh good, yeah, that's right? everyone's favorite. No, actually, the worst one is <laughs> X-Men Origins Wolverine, if you ask me. Um, that's one yeah, with Deadpool, well, right? sort of. <laughs> well, yeah. It Deadpool characters in it. Someone named Deadpool is in it. Let's sort put of. it that way. <laughs> that can shoot lasers out <laughs> of his yeah. eyes. Woo! We beat the battle... So, that fight nice. was a lot more enjoyable than the one before it. I was prepared. The enemies didn't do anything unfair. I heard that they're, the next Wolverine's going to be R-rated. Like, there's another Wolverine spinoff, right? And it's yeah, going to be rated right. R. And it will take place in the future. Cool. So we got a level 1 female hunter. Time to make her have some babies. That's a little bad, isn't it? Like the ladies, you have to think about their breeding potential. And there's way more guys. <laughs> maybe I just killed off all the ladies early on and didn't realize it. Thank you for your great job co-hosting, Tyler. Yep, always happy to be here. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter, at Paul R. Acevedo. And follow us on Twitch if you are not already. Then, whatever you do, go out into the world and don't hate. Appreciate. See ya. That ought to hold a little SOBs. <laughs>